Hi guys, William Morris here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Retrowave by Splash Sound. Now this library is designed for the full version of Contact, and it's a 12 gigabyte sampled collection of classic uh, Retrowave 80s synths and drum machines. So they've sampled things like the Yamaha DX7, Jupiter 8, uh, Juno 106, uh, the Lindrum, and the list goes on. So the library comes as just over a hundred different contact instruments, and these are broken down into the categories of leads, basses, pads, plucks, keys, and drum kits. So here's the library as it appears in contact. You have the instrument categories on the left-hand side here. In each of those is the individual patches. Here's what the UI looks like. This is broadly the same across all the different instrument categories, but it does change a little bit um, when we get into the drums and also some of the pluck sounds as we gain an arpeggiator for it as well. So my first impressions of the UI are that it's nice and clean, uh, nice and simple. There isn't a huge amount of functionality, but I think all the basics are represented. So we have our ADSR starting on the left, a simple three band EQ, and then controls for reverb, delay, chorus. On this right hand section, we have the pulse controls and these are also mod wheel controllable. Although there is a, a low pass filter here, which is mod wheel controllable, it would have been maybe nice to see that on all the various instrument categories, not just the uh, the basses that we have here. My other minor complaint is that the UI is quite wide in a contact player. There's probably about 60, 70% of the space here, which is just dedicated to this graphic. So uh, let's jump in. I'm just going to play briefly through a lot of the patches, give you a, a general impression of what the library sounds like. You'll have to excuse my uh, terrible keyboard playing. So this first one is from the basses category. So there we go, that's the uh, bass category. And some really nice stuff in there. I think it sounds, um, you know, really kind of authentic. Definitely has a, a kind of more retro synthwave feel to it as opposed to some other libraries I've seen recently that have uh, updated or, or modernized the kind of sound as well. This does feel kind of quite classic for me so far. So uh, let's move on. And up next is the drums. So the UI has changed a little bit here. We can just see our individual drums on the left here. And we've got a few more controls over uh, tuning for each one. There's low pass, high pass, individual uh, reverb sends for them. And with all the drum kit patches, they're divided into two halves. So you have the playable drum kit on the left hand side. So these are multi-sampled. And then you have a, a groove section, which are basically loops mapped to individual keys on this right hand side. So I'll do a couple of loops and then play a little bit of the kit for both. So these are now the playable sections. So there's a little bit from the kit and we'll move on to the Electron MD. And here's some loops from that one. Uh, 
And next up we have the famous Lindrum. And finally, the Roland 77. A couple of loops. Okay, so uh, that's it for the drum kits. There's only four of these, but I do feel they kind of cover uh, the majority of the ground you'd want to kind of maybe cover in this in this kind of style. So uh, let's move on and we'll dive into the key section now. So for this, the UI changes a tiny bit again with the pitch LFO being assigned to the uh, mod wheel. But other than that, everything else is the same. So again, I really like these. There's a nice mix, I kind of feel. I mean, there's not, I'm, I'm always a little wary when libraries have just hundreds and hundreds of patches and stuff. And I think if you can kind of concentrate it down into maybe, yeah, less than 20, it's much more fun to, to browse and kind of go through. Okay, so uh, that's the keys. Let's uh, move on and go to the lead sounds now. <laughs> So I think this is probably a category that might not get as much use uh, overall for me just because it's kind of, it's definitely got, uh, it, it definitely kind of dates your pieces really kind of strongly to that that point in time. So I think if you're going for that kind of hint of synthwave or the more kind of modernized version of it, this is, is going to be quite a strong uh, push towards one side. So uh, that's the leads. Uh, up next we have some pads.
think the pads might actually be one of my favorite uh, sections of this. Um, again, like there's a, there's not an incredible amount, but they're all definitely different. And from everything I've experimented with, they're just a lot of fun to, to play with. You know, it's, it's hard to kind of get a, a bad sound out of them, if that makes sense. So uh, final category now, um, that would be the plucks. Uh, so this kind of covers you for all your sort of arpeggiated sounds and stabby kind of things which is obviously a massive part of the synthwave stuff. So they've uh, included an arpeggiator, which you can turn on on the right-hand side. And you have uh, obviously pretty basic uh, but normal arpeggiator controls. So this is all the the ordering. You've got controls over like the octave spread, uh, the rate, and a swing control as well. So I'll, I'll switch back and forth between having the arpeggiator on and off uh, just to give you an idea of how it would sound as an arpeggio and how it sounds more as a kind of pluck, stabby kind of thing. So uh, let's have a listen to a few more. So what would have been nice for maybe this one is to be able to keep the arpeggiator on with the same pattern and then flick through the sounds instead of having to change per patch and then uh, sort of reinstate the, the settings that you had before. I think in terms of browsing that just would have been a, a nice workflow improvement. But uh, let's have a listen to a few more. So there we go guys, that is the pluck section. And as with the other sections, I think there's just a really nice kind of spread of uh, of sounds on offer here. I think my main thing for the ARP section, as I say, would have been really nice to have a, maybe an arpeggiator that locks um, or one that you can just switch the sound up and keep the same arpeggio going. So uh, overall, I've actually really enjoyed using this library. Um, I quite enjoy sort of very specific purpose libraries with a, a kind of quite curated number of presets. I think they always, uh, they're helpful as tools because you know pretty much exactly what you're gonna get. Um, and it makes it easy to find and sort of easy to browse when there's not thousands of patches and options to kind of go through. So I think if you're looking to do like a complete synthwave style track, then this library could definitely be for you. Uh, but also if you just wanted to add maybe a couple of, of elements from the, the genre into your own stuff. So, you know, if you just wanted some, some 80s kind of style ARPs, or maybe a kind of synth wavy bass um, alongside some other modern elements as well. That could be kind of cool. Uh, I believe this library is $78 at the minute, which compared to everything else I've seen out there seems definitely on the, on the reasonable side for the amount of content. And also the fact that this is a sampled library as opposed to a synthesized one. So they're obviously, uh, you know, real sampled recordings of the real hardware. And I have to say the sound quality because of that, I think is, is really lovely. 
I can't speak to how authentic the library is because I don't own a lot of the original hardware units, but it definitely has that sort of, captures that sort of sound for me. There's nothing overhyped or too harsh or nothing sounds like it's been overly processed here. So guys, that's going to uh, wrap it up for me. Hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough slash review of, uh, of Retrowave. I'm hoping to do some more sample library review stuff uh, fairly soon. So if there's anything you guys are interested in, uh, just let me know in the comments. Also, big thank you to anyone who's seen my uh, previous Albion versus uh, Metropolis Arc video. I'm hoping to do some more uh, sort of comparison videos soon. So uh, that's it for me, guys. Thanks for watching.